I'm in Marble Canyon, Arizona, and I'm going to hike Cathedral Wash Canyon inside Glen Canyon National Park. This is a slot canyon that takes you out to the Colorado River. So throughout this uh, hike, I'm going to kind of guide you through it and give you some tips and advice so you know what to expect before you go and what is going to happen while you are there. The most important thing is that this hike is a medium difficulty hike. Now, I looked it up on a couple of places and one place actually said that even though it's a medium difficulty hike, it's really not that not that hard because there's only one spot where it's a little bit hard, but other than that, it's pretty easy. But I need to tell you, it is really a medium difficulty hike. And I'm going to give you some information about that. Who should and who should not go on this hike? Well, first of all, no pets are allowed, but it's for a good reason. A dog would not make it. Small dog, large dog, it doesn't matter. They don't know how to climb. They could not actually follow the path. So no pets are allowed. I would say very young children couldn't make it. I have seen a five-year-old little boy and their parents had to turn around because they said that they just couldn't make it with him and I could totally see why later on. But I did see a little eight, nine year old girl and she was perfectly fine. So by that age, they were a little bit taller, legs and arms are a little bit longer and they can better use it to you know, climb up and hold on to things. So the, those few years of age difference, I guess it makes a big difference. But other than that, I would say you should be in at least average physical health. So that means that if this is your first hike ever, you can probably do it, but you don't want to do it alone. You definitely need someone with you, if anything, for emotional support. I went by myself and it's usually advised against to hike by yourself, but this area is not completely abandoned. There are people coming and going. It's not too many that is disturbing, but if something had happened to me, there would be people there. They could hear me yelling or they could see me lying there so they could get help. But what you want to make sure is that you evaluate your own health and see if you are able to do this hike. So if you have any kind of joint problems, especially knees or shoulder problems, you shouldn't be doing this hike. If it's hard for you to put pressure on your upper body or maybe crouch down or climb up over and over again, and then later on you're, you're hurt, then this hike wouldn't be for you. So just make sure that you are able to do this and not get hurt out there or not be hurt for weeks after. You need to carefully prepare for this hike and make sure that you have everything that you need. So the first thing is a good pair of hiking shoes. Now, I don't mean like hundreds of dollars worth of hiking shoes, but they need to have good traction. So no tennis shoes will work because they can be slippery. The rocks are not slippery, but often you have sand on them and you will be standing on the edge of a ledge sticking out and if you slip and fall that could be fatal so you need something really good with traction make sure it's not your first time wearing those boots either so that you know how comfortable they are the second most important thing is water this is april so the weather is perfect it was in the 70s it can actually get kind of warm under the sun and then it would get a little bit cooler in the shade but it's not shady everywhere and if you go later on in the year it will get super hot so you need to take enough water with you i would also say take some snacks because you always need to have enough energy to make a hike and you don't know how this will affect you so it's better for you to take some snacks and not need them but if you don't have them and you run out of energy, you won't be able to make it. So you want to avoid that. Some granola bars, cheese, nuts, 
things like that your usual hiking snacks will do i would say dressing layers so maybe like a tank top or t-shirt but also take a sweatshirt with you depending on how late you're going to stay there and just put everything in a backpack and I don't think you need hiking sticks because you're not gonna need them on the flat area and you won't be able to use them in the other areas. Why is this a medium difficulty hike? Well, first of all, you are going to be using your feet, your hands, your knees, your shoulders, your entire upper body to be walking, kneeling down, climbing up pretty high at times. You might need to make little jump offs or as you can see, I usually sit on my butt and just slide down so I don't have to jump, but sometimes you do have to jump and then you wonder how you're going to pull yourself back up. Honestly, there was really only one spot where I just didn't know if I would make it because I had to pull myself up at chest level on this rock and there was really nothing to hold on to and i would say my upper body strength is about medium it's nothing more i was able to make it but it took me a few minutes so besides this the most important thing is for you to stay level-headed um, you're going to be making decisions of where to go and how to do it and you will be making mistakes and you're gonna have to turn around and find another way this path this trail is completely natural it's not maintained there are no markers there's no clear path and as you can see a lot of times you have something really deep down in the middle that you cannot get down to sometimes you can and other times it's way too deep and you don't know how it's going to end up. So you have to walk either on the left hand side or on the right hand side. And the problem is you can't necessarily tell if that left hand side will kind of taper down where you could walk in the middle or if it's going to end up 20 feet high and now you have to turn around and come back. So you have to take your time and just just try to see which way is best to go and just don't get frustrated. A couple of times I had to turn back, but it was okay. There will be footprints on the ground in the, in the sand, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything because you had many people before you trying to figure things out. So they went this way and then they went that way and they figured it out. So it's just footprints everywhere, but it's just important for you to just make decisions of safety if it feels a little scary or it feels like you can't do it you really have to listen to your instincts because it's it's very important there will be some areas where you hunch down such as right here you don't need to crawl anywhere um i mean this could be more comfortable for some people but you can just hunch down and just walk and if you see people you could follow them that's definitely helpful there's often more than one way to do it i would say there's usually a hard way and then an easier way so try to find the easier way but if something feels too difficult just remember there may be a different way to do it i would say out of this whole entire hike there was one time I forget where it was, but one time where I was looking, I could walk on the left, I could walk on the right, and there was this deep drop down in the middle, and I almost turned around. I, I just could not see how I could possibly make it. It seemed too dangerous. It just, it just didn't seem possible. It was maybe my mind messing with me for a second, but then I remembered that this is a well-known trail. People have made it there and they have made it back. And those footprints around me, they actually gave me the courage to just try to find a way and just go, it's not impossible. So that's what I did. But um, that's why it helps if you have someone with you, they can kind of serve as encouragement. But if you do it by yourself, then just take your time and just enjoy it. It is a good physical exercise. It's not necessarily strenuous but you will probably get tired by the end, but it's not super crazy.
this here is a good example of me trying to figure out which way to go. Everything just seemed so high and so deep that I kept walking around, kept turning around, but there is always a way to make it. At least in this canyon, there's always a way. Coming back will be a lot easier somehow because hiking down, it's always harder than hiking up. When you're hiking down, you you know, it just seems like you could fall down. Your knees, they, they work differently. They're a lot harder. Hiking up, you can just kind of crawl up like a little spider, right? So on the way out, it took me about an hour and a half, maybe an hour, 45 minutes with very minimal stops. I stopped for like a second to drink some water and keep going. But on the way back, it was maybe an hour, an hour, 15 minutes because it was just so much quicker. Um, towards the end, it's going to be a lot easier. So the, the hike starts out pretty easy, just walking on flat area, and then it gets difficult, more and more and more difficult. And then once you're, you're past that, then it gets easier again. It will still be a lot of climbing up and down and over racks, so, so physically, it will be a little bit strenuous, but it won't be scary, like in the difficult parts. And then at that point, you can actually hear the river and that just gives you that final push to make it out there. Once you make it to the river, it is such an amazing feeling. Honestly, I have seen prettier sides of this river. The day before I floated down on the Colorado River in my kayak, and it was the most magnificent views. But after this hike, <laughs> you work so hard for it that once you hear that water getting louder and louder, and then you just see it flowing right in front of you, it just feels like you finally made it to paradise. And you take a little break, you stay as long as you can or as long as you want. There's no camping here, but you could have a little picnic, you know, just relax, put your feet in the water if you want. And then you're going to turn around and um, go back. I would definitely recommend this hike if you're physically able to do it. The video cannot even possibly show you what it's like to be there because all those rock formations above you 30 feet 50 feet i don't even know how high it doesn't even fit in the video and the same thing underneath you it's so deep that you're just standing there and it's all around you it's just amazing and on top of it you see hundreds of millions of years of geological history right in front of you words and even a video cannot explain it you just have to do it so if you're in the area definitely plan it like i said prepare for it make sure you can do it but um, this is inside Glen canyon national park so you do need to pay you can either pay for the one visit which is actually good for seven days or you could get your yearly pass for the park or the yearly pass for all the parks i think that's either 70 or 80 dollars and that's what i have and that way i could go anywhere i want so i definitely recommend it let me know if you have done this um, any comments you have or if you have any questions just leave me a comment and i will respond and I will have some more videos coming up from this trip. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.